Okay, I am so freaking tired right now, but I cannot sleep. A lot of anxiety, but I'm not smoking. Yeah, I am doing really well when it comes to that. I smoked for maybe like a day and a half, and at the most it was like a whole cigarette. So I'm re-watching The Bad Girls Club. Don't even ask. I don't even know why. It came up, and I thought, you know what? I used to love that show. So my favorite season was always it was season five with Kristen and uh, Le Leah and who else? Oh, the cast was so good. Okay, so I'm just watching it. And it brought back a lot of memories of my 20s. A lot of memories. I didn't realize it at the time because they didn't really, this show wasn't on yet, but I was a full-blown bad girl. I was. I was full-blown party girl, loved to have fun, hung around other bad girls. Um, if you were a good girl, you were boring to me. You know, girls at work, some of the girls at work were so fucking boring. So I'd only hang around the girls at work that liked to go out after to have a good time. Because we would close up at like closing time, but we still wanted to have fun. Or some of us girls would say, you know what, let's change places with so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so, so we could get out of here early and we could go clubbing. But I also had a friend that everyone knows about because I talk about her all the time, Mandy. And we were probably bad girls since we were like 15. And when I really look back and yeah, <laughs> we didn't really like boring people. We only hung around the people that liked to have fun. So if you were, if you were down to go to the beach and have some beers or whatever, uh, go to a party, even if, you know, we didn't have a driver's license, driver's license, we always had to have someone around that did have a driver's license and we liked to party and have fun. So the bad girls brings back a lot of memories. A lot of things that I kind of forgot about. Yeah, we get into fights here and there and what, what have you. It was lame. Nothing like this. Nothing like the bad girls. We didn't go like hard like that. I mean, it's just, yeah. <laughs> when I was young, back in Philly, when I would go visit in the summers, you know, I had to kind of do that. Be kind of tough because it was my um, aunt... Not my dad's family. My dad's family came from like Melrose Park and it was very upper class and what have you. But my mom's sister and my mom's mom didn't live in the best area to grow up or to hang out. And so, yeah, people would just come up to you in the, in the alleyway. And the alley is basically the way you get to your car, the way you get to the, to the basement. I mean, it's there's a lot of back alleys. So somebody would always come up and try to fuck with you. And the guys there, they like to beat girls up. And no joke. When I was only, I think I was like 12 or 13, my friend who was already having a boyfriend, which I kind of did too at the time, did not real, but you know, we didn't like make out or anything or have sex. But I remember this boy that she was dating, dating just bitch slapped her really hard right in front of me. And in front of her brother. And her brother did absolutely nothing. Nobody did. And I was just standing there like, what the fuck? That's not okay. And I knew right then, I'm like, if I stay here, because I always wanted to go back. I was always like, I'm going to go live with my aunt. I don't want to fuck camp, you know, fuck the town I'm from. <sighs> After that, that, that incident, because my mom had already left. And I used to try to talk my father into moving back to Philly. I was kind of over it. Because I was like, no, I'm, I'll fight some girls if I have to, but I'm not going to fight a man, a boy, really. Um, so that kind of traumatized me and I never really, de I decided not to go back. But in this area where I grew up, yeah, every once in a while we get in each other's faces. But I remember this one, this is when I knew like things have gone too far and we were true bad girls. <laughs> We were in our 20s, we were living in an apartment, me and Mandy, and we used to like to date guys and bands. And the guy that I was kind of off and on with for a very long time, 
was blowing me off. That's what he did. He blew me off and then he loved me. Then he blew me off and then he loved me. It was so back and forth and so fucked up. It was a mental mind fuck. And now I would be like, fuck you. I wouldn't even be interested. And the truth was I wasn't interested in him from the beginning. Like when I first met him, I'm like, ew, no. <laughs> I just got out of this really long relationship and what have you. So um, by the time I met him, I'd already gone through the beginnings of a very bad girl phase where I would hang around all the girls from work and we would go out, go out every night and party. And we were just, we would have so much fucking fun. The best. Those were the best times ever. And some of the girls I hung around with like to fight other girls. And I was just not about it. I was like, whatever. I'm going to go to the bathroom, put on my makeup, whatever. Refresh myself. Uh, but this, this time period, um, when I started dating the guy in the band, he used to trigger me so easily like we were at this party and I was drunk of course because that's what bad girls do we party and this pretty blonde shows up and he was kind of being flirty with her we were at a house party and I just fucking tripped I just tripped like instead of kicking her ass because she didn't deserve it I knew meant in my mind I knew I don't even know her. She doesn't know that I'm dating him or we were dating like a few minutes ago. And, um, so his friend was like, I was really angry and I wanted to leave. And his friend kept like grabbing my arm. I punched him right in the fucking face, punched him over and over again. And, and then I kicked him in the shin and he was in a lot of pain and he started crying and he fell to the ground. I don't even know why I did that. I just, tripped hard and my friend was like we gotta go you gotta go what is going on let's let's get out of here I'm like no fuck him that fucker you know just I was talking all the shit I looked ridiculous you know when I see girls fighting now I'm like they look so stupid they have no idea but by the time I was that age I had already been through so much and I see these girls you know on the bad girls club and I recognize myself in them and how much pain they're in internally and how angry they are and how frustrated and how much they just want love and understanding. They want their families to pay attention to them. Um, they've been raped. They've been abused. They've been neglected. They've, they've been through a lot, the majority of those girls. And so I, I remember that feeling at that moment, beating up a guy and I whooped his ass. It was ridiculous. He should have, he should have just held me down. I don't know. And then I was thinking of Mandy. I was thinking of not too long after we, I started, I stayed away from the guy in the band. I was like, I can't do this anymore. I can't go back and forth and I can't be beating up guys. I cannot do it. And we were at this club and she had a crush on this guy in the, guy in the band. He was the singer. He was in a reggae band, super hot dreadlocks. That was in back then. I think it's still in. Um, he was a white guy with dreadlocks. That was super, yeah. So <laughs> he was kind of ignoring her. And I was sober that night because I was driving. I wasn't sober sober. I had like one beer, but I wasn't, I definitely was sober enough to drive. She was wasted. And she was so angry because this guy would not pay attention to her that she started charging me like a bull. I swear to God meme her friend that drove her there that did everything for her you know like she wouldn't have had a place to live if it wasn't for me i always paid for everything she never had any money she was like brandy from this season of the bad girls club <laughs> she was like she had she was lovable and funny and so and we've been friends since like the fifth grade so i just had her back 100 i was super loyal just like Kristen was with um Kristen was loyal to Leah. She really was. She loved Leah. Leah was a bad friend. Just like Mandy was not the best friend to me. She really wasn't. She didn't have my back at all. Um, there's been times where I've been in fights when we were younger and she just left or watched from the sidelines. She didn't jump in to help nothing. 
And in fact, I think she started one of the fights. I told the girl I said something when I didn't. So she was like the Leah. And I was like the Kristen. I was like, fuck you. You know, you're a bad friend. So she starts charging me like a bull. And every time she came at me, I just moved to the side. You know, I, yeah, just moved to the side. I'm like, what are you doing? And finally she like grabbed me and I, and I grabbed her back by her hair and I whispered in her ear. I said, I am sober. I will fuck you up. Do not fuck with me. And then I pushed her back. And then she's like, and then, you know, when you're drunk like that, her head just kind of like flies back. And she's like, and then she charged me again. I said, I'm out of here. I'm leaving. You're going to have to call a cab. I know you don't have any money, but you'll figure out a way. I am not putting up with this shit. I've done nothing to you. I've been nothing but a good friend. Go fuck yourself. Because I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to fight a drunk girl. Never. You never fight someone that's like wasted. That's such a low, low thing to do. So I'm watching the scene in the Bad Girls Club where Christian, uh, Kristen slaps Leah because everybody abandoned her. Nobody cared that, that Kristen was missing. The blondie, blondie was missing. And if your friend's missing, you go look for your friend, especially in a strange town, you know, when they're, when you know they're drunk. You don't just go like, oh, I'm going to go make out with this guy and blah, blah, blah. That's totally something Mandy would have done because they just, it's a selfish thing. It's a selfish thing. They don't really have your back. They never really did. So she could, they get back to their little cottage, their little, you know, beach cottage. And Kristen was there and she was wasted. And from what I hear now, she had been drugged. And so Kristen's all fucked up and she's like, why did you leave me? That's not cool. You're not a friend. You're fake and all this shit. When you see someone that's drunk like that and being belligerent, you don't fight them. Like I didn't fight Mandy. I could have whooped her ass right in front of the guy that she had a crush on. I was sober. I had all the power in that moment to just finally whoop her ass after all those years of her fucking me over. But I was loyal to her. Always, always had her back, always defended her, no matter who hated her. I mean, it was, I had a, I was friends with a, a girl that hated her guts and that showed up at the house. See, okay. That's a whole other story. Mandy was taunting one of my friends and saying, oh, I fucked your man. I fucked your man. Over, she was talking to her over the phone. I fucked your man. You don't say that to someone, especially you don't do that. And then the girl shows up at the house and Mandy lets her in. And so the girl kicks her ass. She gave her a black eye. She whooped the fucking, she whooped that ass. And I get a phone call and I just, you know, I was like, what's going on? And I just got in stone for the first time in like years. Second hand high too. I didn't even smoke, the, you know, smoke the weed. It was just, I was in the room with a bunch of people smoking pot and I was in my car and I'm like, what the, what's going on? Uh, first she calls, Oh, Lord just whipped my ass and I didn't do anything to her. And it's, you know, how could you be friends with her? Cause she hasn't done anything to me. And you told her, you basically let her in the house and you told her you fucked her boyfriend. I don't know what to tell you. So in that moment, I realized that after all the times that I defended her, I'm not going to defend her in this case. She deserved it. She deserved to get her ass kicked. Someone finally fucking did it. And in this case, when we were at the bar, when she was drunk and I wasn't, I wasn't going to take advantage of that situation. And I still had her back in that moment. And I just walked out and she follows me. Oh, don't leave. I'm going to need a ride. You just try to like fight me at a bar in front of someone you, you crushed on. What a fuck you. But I did. I let her in the car. I just sit in the back. Don't talk to me. <laughs> We're going home. If you fuck with me at all, it's you're out. You're fucking out. We're done. So Kristen confronted Leia and she's like, why did you leave me? Blah, blah, blah. And Leia was pretty much, she wasn't sober, but she wasn't drunk. She wasn't wasted. She just got through making out with some guy she met. It was, you know, I, I like Leia. Um, and Kristen was obviously like not in the, her right mind. She was really fucked up. So she hit her. In that case, I would have just held her down. I just would have like 
flipped her over and held her down and said, calm the fuck down. And that would have been that. I wouldn't have tried to hit her and jump her, you know, but that's really what happened. She tr like tried to beat her ass. And I thought Leah would could go harder than that after watching the show all season, you know, I thought, okay, Leah's going to fucking kill her. Leah is going to destroy her. But then when I saw her fight, I was like, that's it. That was it. Okay. I like Leah. Don't get me wrong. To this day, I'm like, she's one of my favorites, but that was kind of bullshit. But on top of that, when Kristen cried and showed up the next day and apologized, she should have accepted her apology. She obviously was wasted. Um, she had had her back the entire time. Any fight that Leah got in, Kristen was right there to back her up 100%. And even hold people back and hold her back and all of that. Get in between people. I mean, she had a Pandini thrown at her, you know, because she was backing her up. So, I, I mean, after that, I heard that, like, Leah was, like, tormenting her. And after she got kicked off the show or whatever. she I think she left. I can't remember. But uh, I'm glad Leah's in a different place. I think she's in the Navy now. I think... I don't know what she's doing, but she's doing really good in life. And this was a long time ago, but I'm just watching this again because I was thinking, God, I used to love that show. That was so much fun. <laughs> Not really. There was a lot of fights. There's a lot of anger. These girls have a lot of issues and I did too. I was a bad girl. Um, I feel sorry for the, the girl that I was, you know, I wish I had someone back then someone that would come into my life and be like you're too good for this this is not you you don't need to party you don't need to you know, smoke pot you don't need to hang around these losers and this girl's not your friend i wish somebody would have told me that about mandy a long time ago like she is not your friend she's the one that kind of threatened me not too long ago i think it was like a year ago yeah yeah that's not a friend um I wish I would have saw it sooner. My life might have been a lot different. I think I hung around the wrong people and I was drawn to the wrong people. I was drawn to people that were in as much pain as I was, but sometimes worse. When the reality is when you're in that much pain, you need to be around people that have light and knowledge and wisdom. And I didn't really have access to that. I didn't feel, but now, you know, reconnecting with old friends on Facebook and what have you. And they're like, oh, God, I kind of wish I always wanted to hang out with you more. And you were always off, like going to LA or going to parties. You know, I just wanted to hang out with you. And I thought kind of, I, I could have just been normal and just hung around normal people that cared about me and that were okay with who I was, you know, but I, they were boring. They were fucking boring. I thought these people are so boring. I don't want to hang around her house all day watching TV and doing homework. I don't want to do homework, you know, and in my twenties, especially like, I'm not, I'm not just going to go home after working all night. No, I want to go party. So yeah, after watching this episode, especially it just kind of triggered me and it made me see where I was at one time. And then I was wondering why I liked the show so much, you know, back in the day when it was, when it was a thing. There's a few seasons I like. I like this season. Um, I love the Natalie season. I run LA. I run LA. I can't remember what season that was. Four? Season four or five? There's like three seasons that I like and that was it. So I didn't really get into all the others. If I didn't like the girls, I was done. I tried watching, I think, season eight or, or nine and one of the girls every few minutes one of the girl well, this girl was getting jumped for just no fucking reason i think her name was sarah she was blonde big 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 bottom uh very curvaceous i don't know if her ass is fake i have no idea um doesn't really matter but as soon as this one girl scratched her eyes out with her fingernails I was like, oh, I'm done. I'm fucking done. No. You know, hell no. And I feel like she didn't really even get any in any trouble. All the other girls were like, we're going to miss you, girl. She got kicked out, of course. But the cops should have been called. Like, that's some fucked up shit to scratch somebody's eyes out. So that's, that was like the lowest of the low. So yeah, the first maybe like five or six seasons was kind of fun. And I didn't watch, you know, quite a few of them. But 
this season in particular was so good. And this part, I just watched, um, you know, the part where Leah thinks that she beat the shit out of Kristen, a drunk girl, a girl that could barely stand, um, probably didn't even know she was hitting her at all. And that kind of bothered me. I was like, you're going to just beat up a drunk girl? Like, yeah, yeah, they're talking shit. Like, get out of here, ho, fuck you, blah, blah, blah. And Kristen's like crying and like in fetal position on the cement and just, and like I said, I heard that she had been drugged. There was that creepy guy at the bar. I don't know if anyone else remembers that, but I just watched it. Uh, there was that weird creepy guy at the bar. They had bangs in common. Remember, she just got some bangs. Made me Makes me want to do it, but then, uh, you know, too much work. And the guy was like grabbing on her ass and go, oh, do you want another drink? Are we going to go home? Are we going to go home? She's like, no, she always did that. No. And I'm thinking he drugged her for sure. Like she wasn't that drunk before that. And then that happened. And then it was like, she was in another, I don't even know how she survived. I, she could have overdosed, you know, alcohol poisoning. I don't know. But her and Leah's friendship, I loved. And they had so much fun together and Leah did change, but in a good way, I thought. And Leah started being kind of selfish with her. When her friend came to town, her friend, Sean, her fabulous gay friend, Sean came to town. She was just kind of ignoring him and just being kind of weird. And so Kristen kind of started realizing like, maybe Leah's not my friend. This sucks. And they spent way too much time together. And so I think she started pulling away from Leah long before Leah pulled away from her. And of course that snitch in the house, I forgot her name because she was, a, she was a replacement. She was talking all kinds of shit, just ratting people out. So she told, she told, who was it? Brandy. She told Brandy that Kristen said, oh yeah, she's changed. But Kristen also said that to Brandy. So it was coming like that fight was coming but I think she should have waited until she was a little sober. She should have taken that punch because that's what I would have done. I would have taken it and said, all right, all right. Yeah. What do you wait? You just wait because when we're both sober one day, I'm going to beat your ass. But like I said, to attack a drunk girl and not forgive her, you know, it's, but like I said, they're way past it. Uh, Kristen now has two daughters. She's a single mom. Her baby daddy's a total fucking piece of shit. And she still looks amazing. And then Leah, I think she's in the Navy, the Army, something like that. But she looks amazing. And she's, you know, she's doing really well. Brandy, I don't know. I love Brandy too, though. She cracks me up. And the rest of them, no idea whatsoever. None. All right, so that's my bad girl talk. I, I don't think they should bring the show back. I know they have baddies. You know, and uh, of course, Natalie Nunn is like the one ha handling it all. <sighs> this is all she's ever had, Natalie Nunn. And I don't really necessarily like her as a person. I don't think she really genuinely cares about anyone. I think it's all about fame and money and power and materialistic things. It's always been that way with her. But she wanted to bring, you know, the bad girls back together, but she couldn't use the term bad girls because of the oxygen channel. I think it was oxygen. Yeah. So she, they came up with baddies and basically they just have girls just in auditions fighting each other. I saw a clip and I said, Oh hell no, I'm not watching this, but she's made a lot of money off of it. Natalie. Nunn. Now she really has the money she used to claim to have, you know, like it's her own now. And then I think about her child. I'm thinking who's taking care of her child. I hope, I don't know. It's none of my fucking business. Her daughter's adorable. I don't know. All right. Uh, peace out. I have to go to bed.